I noticed that astrophotographers are struggling with their filters. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the theory of filters. And at the end of this video, also go through a few of the filters that are available in the market. So you know which one to choose for your specific situation at the time you are photographing something. My name is Jorgo or George. I am a longtime photographer and astrophotographer with a master's degree in physics and astronomy. A filter is something that you put on your image train between the telescope and the camera to fulfill a certain purpose. The filters that we have in astrophotography are basically two categories. You have your broadband filters and you have your narrowband filters. But before we go to, into detail about each of these two categories, let's have a quick chat about light because that is important. So when we talk about light, we talk about light as our eyes see it. And that's not so strange. It's our main frame of reference. But if we were to look at light scientifically, we would see it as an electromagnetic field. Light is very special. It can behave both as a particle and as a wave. And for us in astrophotography, it makes more sense to talk about light as an electromagnetic wave. Everybody can picture a wave like the waves in the ocean. You have your ups and you have your downs or your maximums and your minimums. And the distance between two maximums, which is a phys real physical distance, is called a wavelength. Now, this is important because I'm going to use wavelengths all the time. So remember that. Electromagnetic fields come in a wide variety of wavelengths. They range from 0.0, .0 nanometers to maybe a few meters. And now you might be wondering, what is a nanometer? Well, a nanometer is 0.0000000001 meters, or if you want 0.0000004 inches which is a very, very small distance, but we're talking about light here. By the way, if you like this video, don't forgive it a light. But don't forgive the give. Don't forgive the give. Don't forgive. What, what the hell? Don't forget to give it a like. It will help others to find this video. Okay, so now let's talk about light as we see it, the light that our eyes can detect. That light or that specific electromagnetic field ranges from about 380 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And our eyes are really good at this because they separate those different wavelengths using colors. So scientifically, colors are simply electromagnetic fields with different wavelengths. And at the far end of the spectrum, you have your violets and further down your ultraviolets. And on the other side, you have your reds or even further towards the infrared. And as you can see here, it's just a rainbow. And that is exactly how rainbows work. Light from the sun hits the water droplets in the air and the water droplets scatter these wavelengths differently. So you end up seeing a rainbow with all of these colors. Now, all of these colors are actually a combination of red, green, and blue. And that is because that's how our eyes work. We have receptors for red, green, and blue in our eyes, meaning that they are sensitive for this kind of, uh, for this specific type of wavelengths. So it only makes sense that our cameras work exactly the same because the camera is supposed to give you an accurate representation of what you see or what we see with our eyes. So on every color camera, you have a filter in front of your sensor that divides these sensitivities into two greens, one blue and one red. And that is called a buyer filter. And on top of that, you also have an eye cut filter, which makes your camera less sensitive towards the far ends of the spectrum. And when you astro modify a camera, you're just removing that specific filter. So your camera gets more sensitive towards the infrared, more of the interest lies for us astrophotographers. So as you can see in this figure, you have your rainbow or the wavelengths on the bottom. And if we add another axis towards the top showing how much of your light that you're actually getting to the sensor, together with the buyer filter, your sensor gets the sensitivity graph looking basically something like this. And if we were to separate the three different channels, you end up seeing them more of what they are. You have your blues, you have your greens, and you have your reds. 
So this is what every color sensor camera sees. This is what we call broadband light. And this is important when we are photographing galaxies, for instance, because galaxies are just a bunch of stars and stars come in different colors. They come in all colors, so we can't really filter out any of them, the, those colors or the wavelengths that we want. So if we were going to use a broadband filter, we would manipulate this graph as little as possible. If we, however, started using more stronger filters, narrowing down the channels even more, we're starting to move towards the narrow band filtering. So the broad band filters and the narrow band filters refer to the width of the filters or the band pass as it's called. It's like the width of this curve that lets through the light. And there is no definition exactly on where a brown band filter becomes a narrow band filter or vice versa, but around 30 nanometers of band pass or width is a reasonable approximation. So first off, let's have a look at brown band filters. So the main purpose of a brown band filter is to let in as much of the available light as possible and blocking out just the unwanted light, which is, for our case, the light pollution, the street lights. Now, before LED lights, light pollution came in a very, very specific wavelength because that's just gas that glows, like sodium lamps or mercury lamps. And that is like that orange glow that you can see. If you go out on a vantage point at night near a city, you'll most likely see the city glow in a bit of an orangey light. And these wavelengths were around 600 nanometers, give or take a few, there were different lines, and broadband filters could easily just block out these specific wavelengths, and they worked like a charm. Unfortunately, with the invention of LED lights, this doesn't become as easy anymore, because LED lights, they shine in the entire spectrum, so you get light pollution throughout the whole spectrum of visible light, that you need to photograph when you're photographing galaxies, for instance. So to tackle this specific problem, manufacturers started to make these band passes a little bit smaller. So they went from simple light pollution broadband filters to narrower, which they call city light suppression or CLS filters. And some of them have even taken further, making them even a bit more narrower, going towards the narrow band definitions and those are called ultra high contrast or UHC filters. So I would categorize broadband filters in light pollution filters, CLS filters or even narrower UHC filters. Narrow band filters however have a completely different purpose. Instead of letting in as much light as possible, their job is to block out as much of the light as possible except for that really, really specific wavelength that you want. Remember, we're talking about gas that glows, nebulas are gas that glows, and they have a very specific wavelength, so we could simply target those with a narrow band filter. And as I mentioned previously, the definition for narrow band uh, starts around 30 nanometers, and the best you have in the market right now is around 3 nanometers like the band pass is around three nanometers. And as many of you probably already know, we have mostly three types of gas that glow out there in the universe. You have your hydrogen, you have your oxygen, and you have your sulfur. So you get those three very specific narrow band filters. So a problem that you will have with cameras and narrow band filters is the buyer filter. Because of its functionality to block out most of the light, when you're targeting, for instance, hydrogen or sulfur, you're going towards the reds or the infrareds. And with the buyer filter, you're blocking out a lot of the sensor's capabilities by only letting in roughly 25% of the red light to pass to your sensor. A lot of astrophotographers have decided to buy cameras that simply don't have this buyer filter. And that's what we call a monochrome camera. Now you're using 100% of your sensor, but you can only use one band pass at a time. You can only use hydrogen filter, or you can only use a sulfur filter, or you can only use a oxygen-3 filter. You can't use like a dual band pass filter, for instance. But if you have a color camera, you can. So now let's have a look at what the market has to offer. For the 
nicest broadband filters. You have your light pollution filter, which where you have the very, very popular Optolong L Pro. Uh, you also have this astronomic filter, which is a CLS filter. You see that it's narrower, or you have your SV Boni UHC filter, which uh, is even more narrow. So you have a wide variety of filters you can try out and see what works for you. For narrow band filters, you are looking at different band passes. You're looking at seven nanometer bandpass filters from ZWO. You're looking at six nanometers from Astronomic, or you're looking at three nanometers from Chroma or Optolon. But as I already mentioned, if you're using a color camera, I would definitely recommend a dual bandpass filter, like the Optolon L Ultimate, for instance, which is a very good filter that lets oxygen 3 and hydrogen alpha pass with 3 nanometer and you also have the asker color magic which lets in sulfur and oxygen in 6 nanometer band pass so i'm going to stop here there are of course more aspects of filters like halos or how fast your lens or telescope is but for these topics that i covered in this video should be more than enough that you need to browse the market to find exactly the filters that fulfill your needs. So if you made it all the way here, don't forget to give this video a like or maybe even a dislike if you disagree with me, but then do let me know in the comment section why, because it's good for me to know what you guys are thinking as well. And also if you want to see more of my content, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right, bye bye.